Hello, everybody. We are doing our first Ham and Turkey episode from YouTube, and I appreciate all of you guys tuning in to this episode. Again, we have Chester on here, so you know it's probably a sports topic. So today, <clears throat> we are going to discuss uh, the top five passers in the NBA um, right now. But before I even get into this, I just want to let you know that all of the ham and turkey content will not only be available on the YouTube channel, but it will all, uh, all be available on any streaming platform except for Tidal. So we're on Apple Music or Apple Podcasts, Google, Spotify, anywhere you download your podcast, the ham and turkey is. So I want you to please subscribe on your favorite podcast streaming site. Please subscribe on YouTube so we can uh, get these likes, get these subscribers, so I can uh, get this get this streaming money. And before we start, I want to say that I love to hear everyone's take. So now that we are all in quarantine and everyone pretty much has enough time to say what they want, I want to hear your take. So if you ever want to come on to Ham and Turkey via Zoom, Hit me up on Facebook. It's just simply Ernest Daniels. Hit me up on Facebook or Facebook Messenger, and let's talk about something. Sports, games, movies, music, whatever the case may be, football. And we will get on here and we will discuss it just to get your take, get my take, get everyone's takes out there. Everyone seems to have an opinion these days. So since everyone has an opinion, let's get these takes out. So without further ado, we're going to get into these top five passers in the NBA currently. So I'm going to let Chester go and tell me who his top five passers, then I'll react to uh, to your to your top five. All right. I'm going to go with Ice Trey, Trey Young. I'm mm -hmm. going to go with Steph. I'm going to go with Russ. I'm going to go with Braun, and I'm going to go with CP3. Okay, right off the bat, you got Ice Trey number one after what two seasons? Not, one season? No, 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 no. That's not the order. But those oh, okay. This is in no specific order. No specific order. Okay, but I do have. I actually have Ice Trey on mine. On mine too. He definitely. I agree. Ice Trey is definitely in there, though. I couldn't because I thought we were going. We weren't just doing for this season. I just thought we were doing just actively and. Yeah. Well, that's what yeah. you're doing actively, like in the league yeah. right now. No, I didn't, I didn't know you meant this season. Oh, oh, oh. In particular. No, right now, just in the NBA, players that's in the NBA right now. Yeah, um, I'll take, but I'll take that five. Who you got? All right, so mine's was LeBron. This is, I actually ordered mine's, and it was tough because I had to leave someone off that probably should be on this list, but when we get further into this, I'll explain why he isn't on the list. So okay. I got LeBron one, Chris Paul two, Luca three, Lonzo four, and then Ice Trey five. I can live with that. Right. I can, I feel like that's a great list though. I, I, I on the Jordan and LeBron podcast, I said I felt LeBron was probably like the best passer at that time. So that was what we did that podcast like what two years ago or a year ago or something like that. And I say, yeah, I was like. I think he's the best passer in the league. And I really, I really and sincerely feel that he's the best passer in the league. When they compare him to uh, Magic Johnson, I think that's the most spot on comparison you could possibly give him because he plays to facilitate, but he just happens to average 27 points a game because, you know, he's bigger and stronger than everybody. If you look at his game now, like he literally just like uses his muscle. He doesn't use any moves, nothing, bro. And he just, he doesn't have any finesse to his game and he never has. Yeah, it bulldoze. Get out his way. Exactly. And then it wor it works for him. I love it. But as Skip Bayless always says, LeBron's one greatest gift is his passing. And I would I would definitely agree. He is definitely a team first guy. And he's always been that, which is why he's the only comparable player to Michael Jordan, because he is an all around he's probably the best all around player to ever play. No, he is. He does, he does everything well. Yeah, and I don't know. You could you can't leave him off of a passer list. Like, what was that like last year? Or was it was a couple of years ago. He had hit like 
five thousand assists for his career or something like that, and then he always like twenty thousand points or something like that. Like he's like the only one in NBA history to do that. Only one. Uh, his his numbers is, is impeccable and speaks for itself. And I don't understand. So I'm going to number two. I don't understand why Chris Paul isn't like on your list though. That was your guy. Remember, remember you used to play 2K and you used to always get Chris Paul? I thought I said, said CP3. No, you did not. What was your list again? Go ahead and say it. I, I don't think so. I said Steph. I said I. Yeah. I said Bron. Okay. I thought I said CP3 and I said Russ. Oh, I didn't hear you say CP3, but I just don't feel like, I feel like he got lost in OKC, but he's actually having, or was having, a, like, a, he ain't get lost. He he made an all-star team. Yeah, he ain't get lost. I guess, like, since OKC is in, like, a big market, I guess he just got lost in the shuffle, I guess, but they're winning. They were, like, fifth in the West by the time everything has stopped. So, I don't, I don't know. I don't know why I thought he had this great drop-off with, with, like, when Houston, he was good. He just was hurt. Right, yeah, he hurt that hamstring, man. Those hamstring injuries, they fickle. Yeah. Yeah, CP3 was having a, a great, a great year. So why isn't – uh? so I was looking at this other list, and they had Ben Simmons number one. No, Ben Simmons is a great passer. He is. Is he? Yeah, no, nah, he's, he's, he's like Lil' Brown. Lil' Brown? When Little it comes Brown to pass, actually, yeah, he's 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 no, I'm talking pass. Oh, just passing. He's six uh, ten. He can look over everybody. So he got good. You're saying he got good point. To be six ten and be as quick as he is. So you mess with him. You mess with Vincent. I don't mess with Vincent anymore. I'm done. Oh no, I don't, I don't mess with him. But I still respect the the good parts of his game. I can still celebrate that. Then I don't know, man. I I've been done with him. Like, okay, I guess I'll agree with you here. Like, his greatest gift is his passing. But yeah, open floor. And we're strictly talking about passing right now. He's definitely a floor general, but it's like after that, what else are you giving me? Like, but we only talking about passing. I guess. So I'm, I'm, he I'm has just, like a. It's his game this year when Joel went down. Yeah, what is his game? 15. That's pretty good. I mean, but when you have the ball in his hands as much as he does, I mean, come on, bro. Yeah, <laughs> you're, you're supposed to do that. 15 assists. What? Jordan had the ball in his hand the whole time. He ain't had 15 assists. But Jordan was a stone cold scorer, bro. I mean, he wasn't, he's not known for his passing. He almost averaged five assists for his career. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> the ball don't mean nothing if you distribute it, if you setting up the offense. Okay. So why? Uh, so I number three on my list, I have Luca. Why is not? Why is Luca not on your list? Even though he plays for your favorite team, you're not a big fan of Luca. If anyone knows, Chester's not a huge fan of the best player on his team. So I why like is Luca not on your list? I like Luca. I just want more from him. But um, he's a great passer. He, ain't he, like, number two or number three in the league? Four. Number four? Yeah, he up there. He's fourth at 8.7. Yeah, he, no, he's a great passer. He just turned the ball over a lot, so. But, see, that kind of comes with the territory. Like, No, it don't. You, let me no, see what's the highest assist to turnover ratio. It might be CP3. CP3. Had like a 15 this game and had zero turnovers. Nah, that's some bum. I got the highest assist to turnover ratio. But um, you know who else was on this list though? And uh who's like he's number two. It was Ricky Rubio. Now, Ricky Rubio has always, always, always been a that's great passer. He started he actually third in the league in assists. Why? But I don't understand why he why I couldn't put him on this list though. Maybe because you don't you don't watch enough um, Phoenix games. You don't get to see him feeding book. How about I say how how do I watch Phoenix game? Book's my favorite player. 
Booking PG? Oh, I didn't know you were watching the game. Those are some late games. Yeah, that don't mean I don't watch them, though. Mm -hmm. I just don't – like, everybody on my list, I feel like they give me – like, their passing is just a component to their overall game. But yeah. Ricky Rubio's game is passing. You know what I mean? Like, when he was with the Timberwolves, he would get bashed because he passes too much. Kind of like Rondo, when all the players left from Boston, they would bash him because yeah. he was averaging 13 points and 13 assists. But, like, when you got the ball every possession, like Rondo did, you got to give me at least 20-something points. And that's what Doc was saying. And so I feel like that's the same thing with Ricky Rubio. Like, that is his game, passing. But everybody on our list, they give us more than just passing. Now, we're just talking about passers. But I'm, I feel like passing is – like, remember you used to tell me, like, I just can't pass, like, because passing only does so much for you. Because you can pass – you can overpass to where you're a hindrance to your team. Yeah. And that's the part that – that's where he was at. I don't, you're right. They, it's just a component, but it's a huge component that makes the game easier for um, his teammates. I think with Ru Ricky Rubio, it's the complete opposite. Like, teams are playing the lane for his passing. They're not really – they'll give him a, the lane and take the shot either getting blocked or something else. It's, you're right. It's just a component to theirs, but it makes it easier. It makes their game look easier. Like, he he helps because he can facilitate, but, like, when we need you, when you got, when they're going under screens and we need you to shoot an open jumper, you're not going to do that. You're going to try to hit that pocket pass for under screen and roll, and it's just like we might need you to hit that shot. Cause you yeah, that's – Pocket pass all game. That's that Euro League. Yeah. So he can get away with – but I don't know, man. He, he He's third on his list. He's third in – he was third in the league in assists, so – yeah, I, res I respect his passing. I do. I res I definitely respect his passing. I just couldn't put him on this list, especially not on my not over my fourth guy, Lonzo. Lonzo. I, I don't like. I said I wasn't thinking just this year because if so, Lonzo, he got some assists. That's just crazy, right? I mean, Listen, I mean, with a couple more years, man, I feel like Lonzo could be a top five point guard, especially playing with Zion. I always been high on Lonzo, man. He yeah. played D. He a tall point guard. Like he does everything a point guard is supposed to do. You just don't you don't consistently hit the three. That's it. But yo, he was consistently hitting the three before this whole yeah. COVID thing. He was yeah. knocking them down, bro. They, they say he was working with like a legit shooting coach. And if Lonzo started hitting that shot, because I don't know if anybody watches the, the Pelicans games, they should, but Lonzo is like stupid athletic on the low. No, he, it's not on the low. <laughs> it is not on the low. <laughs> People know he got it. They know he got bungees. Yo, he is athletic. He can defend. And then if he can shoot, like, that's it. That's the component. So I had to, like, because I think, like I said, it's just a component of all these guys' games. But I feel like Lonzo's best attribute is his passing, along with the other components. This is only his, what, third uh -huh. year in the league? Yeah. It's only his third year in the league. And so just think of the possibilities, how much better he could still get. And he upped his free throw percentage too. And he hooping. I mean, they got I, like I got away from his dad. <laughs> wait, go ahead. What'd you say? I said he got away from his dad. He said his dad said he still be in the in the stands at the games. Uh, he ain't working with him. Yeah, he – but you're right, though. He did have to distance himself from his dad and just get better. Got in, got in New Orleans and got the focus. Yeah. So that's the fourth guy on my list. And then the fifth guy I have is Ice Trey. Now, I've watched some of his games. Like, I, like before the COVID thing happened, I did watch some of his games. And the way they put it is he's box office. And I agree. He definitely, like – I mean, the Hawks had the worst record in the league, but I would go to watch him play. And his passing is a part of the show. Oh, no. He, he got the – I can't wait for the season to start because I need to see him and Clint Capella. Like, you think CP3 was doing something. CP3 ain't pulling from 30. So, if he set a screen out there, he really is just running his head to the rim. That yeah. is it. I forgot they traded for Clint Capella, huh? 
Yes, exactly. He got Clint Capella and he got uh, John Collins. He Listen, he's just going to throw it on either side. Somebody going to catch it. But I'm interested to see, like, how their team evolves. Because for, you know, I straight don't play no defense. That's first of all. He don't play any defense. I, listen, I always said that. <laughs> he don't play any defense. But he he's too small. Yeah, he, he's too small. His frame too small, too. He not he don't have no girth to him like Lonzo. Lonzo got bigger, and you can tell that he got bigger. But he just Lonzo is six six. That's said, the difference. Lonzo is six six. That's the difference. Yeah. What Trey I straight was six one. I think they being generous. Oh, you think that's generous? Oh man. So he might be like six foot. foot. Oh man. But I mean, he can't he can't pass that basketball. And he is a show. He he is he is something something to see. But I don't know. I would like to see him like this is just me extrapolating. I would like to see him on a better team. Like if he was on a better team, because I don't feel like he's not Steph. I don't feel like he's Steph. He's not Steph. He's not. He's not Steph at all. But he can. He he's he, he's Trey Young. He can he can figure ways to do things that is just like what? Like you can't do that. So I get. I'll give Trey that. Why is Steph Curry on your list? Why is Steph on my list? Because Steph is a great passer. And like I, it's the component. He don't use it. Everybody on these lists are great passers. I wouldn't say Steph is a great passer. No, Steph is a great, great passer. You got to understand, Steph ain't been passing it to, like, the greatest of people. Outside of KD. I was about to say, him KD, and, KD, him KD. And, um, Hold on, hold on. You don't pass the ball to Clay like that. I thought I Clay thought. gets a lot of his stuff off the great line, but after you go down, after you go to, after you go past Clay and KD, after that, he's been passing it to, who? Andrew Bogut, um, Maurice Spates, um, who else? Who else? Harrison Barnes. Kevon like, he's been passing it to the greatest of people, and he's still been up there as far as assists goes. Uh, where are you? Oh, he ain't played this year, so I can't even look. Let me look at the other year, 2018. Played like two weeks. You said what? Steph only played like two weeks. He did, and he was about. Then he, then he come back. He did come back before all of this happened. He came back. No, I thought um February. I mean February. I thought April first was supposed to be his first game back or March. No, because I remember watching it one night. He came back. He came back and played limited minutes. Oh, okay. He did. He did come back though. I remember that. And obviously, he wasn't himself. But I just don't. I'm trying to understand why is he on the top passer list because you feel like his passing like every, like again everybody on this list their passing makes someone else better so who is he knows who would he make better with his passing what I feel like that's a component of being a great passer you gotta make someone else better with it he won a championship with him Clay and Draymond are you talking about the uh, finals where LeBron's whole supporting cast got hurt. You talking about that one? Yeah. Listen, he still had to beat the best of the West to get there. <laughs> he did. They, he did have to beat the best of the West. But I, I, I don't know. I'm, I, don't, I, I can't give you that one, bro. <laughs> Not over these five. I can't. I can't give you that. Not Steph, bro. I, I like, like him. That. I love him. I think. I think he's the best point guard in the league. I've, I've said that. I think he's the best point guard in the league. But it's because of his shooting ability. <laughs> I wouldn't say that, sir. But that's a different conversation. We can do that conversation another time. But I, we're strictly talking about passers right now, just passers. And yeah. I just don't feel like, you know, I don't feel like Steph should be on this list. Here's a person I left off the list that should be on the list, but I am not going to put him on, and I will give you my reason why. But I want you to Who talk about it. So I left James Harden off the list intentionally. Although he led the league in assists, I think twice in one year, he averaged 11 assists. Like it was, he averaged 11 assists. So I asked myself, why don't I want him on this list? I know why. 
Why? Because you don't respect the his game. Well, you might respect it, but you don't like it. I hate it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I hate it. I hate his game to the to the utmost extent. Because I feel like this is why I left him off the list. The offense is set up kind of like Steve Nash in Phoenix. The offense is set up for him to have the ball and literally in his hands 90% of the time. So since you got the ball, like him and Russ always have the highest usage rates for the past couple of years. They always had the highest usage rates in the league. So if you are being used and you are you have the ball in your hand that amount of time, I feel like you should be averaging that. You know what I mean? I feel like he's passing because he's double teamed. He's not passing because he's making the right play. Now maybe I'm not re I'm not watching basketball correctly, but correct me if I'm wrong. No, you're right. But that's why I went with Russell. Because it was between him and Russell. And that because Russell is like switch teams and still average more assists than him. So for him to be inserted into James Harden's system and still have more assists than him, it shows that he has some he got some passing eyes. You can see. You can see the floor. I mean Russ is Russ I Russ was a he was definitely he might be honorable mention for me because he was like one of the three names that first came to me, but am I putting him over LeBron? No. Am I putting him over Chris Paul? Definitely not. I don't want to put him over Luca. I don't want to put him over Lonzo. And I'm not putting him over Ice Tray. <laughs> so Man, I know that Ice Tray is nothing but little Steph. That's why I don't understand why you don't see why I go with Steph. He's a but I I feel that his handle is better than Steph's. That's a hot take, it, right? His handle, his handle is definitely better, but he look who he like. John, John Collins, he can really, like, he can go and get the ball from anywhere. Like, I done seen him put, like, his whole forearm over the rim. What else is John Steph, Collins Steph, doing? That, that, the best Steph had was Jordan Bell. That's it. That's the most athletic anybody he had, he's had. And KD? KD not even, like, that athletic as Jordan he's Bell. He's not a bouncy dude, but he is pretty athletic for being seven foot. No, he's not pretty. He's just long and linky. I mean, that's part of athleticism. I mean, he has physical traits that make him athletic. Yeah. Like, you got, what, a seven, eight wingspan or something bounce, crazy bounce, like that? Bounce. Like, just bounce, just throw in the alley. Just think about how dangerous Steph would be if they had somebody that can really just run the rim for him and just catch alleys. Uh, then they have that with Kevon Looney? Or have that in Kevon Looney? That's what he's got. He got slow Kevon Looney rolling to the basket and trying to lay it off. I mean, I just but I, I'm still stuck on this Steph thing. Like I where 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 has Steph made a pass where he was just like, oh crap, that was a great pass. I, he's made a I, I, I I don't I've never seen him make a pass like that. Maybe I'm just not remembering correctly, but I can't remember a time where I'm like, oh man, that was a great pass. I just think his shooting overshadows his passing. Okay, and that's that would, could be a fair point. That's what makes him the best point guard in the league to me because that boy is stretching the whole floor, man. Like, there's really not a spot on the floor you can guard him. He just said today that he could drop 60 on any team, and I firmly believe that he could. And listen, if he get high, he can drop anything he wants. <laughs> right. I, I, I agree. I mean, I remember that. Remember that one game? Uh, against OKC was uh, absolutely. <laughs> you you know what I'm talking about the one where um it was KD first time back, and that's when Russ was telling him I'm coming, and yeah. Steph just got crazy and he just started pulling from like just be before just after half court, bro. And I'm like, son, this dude is literally just chucking him, and it's just a sight to see because I've never ever in my lifetime seen somebody pull like that. That's why it's like. He's unstoppable. He is literally he unstoppable. He changed the game. That's why I love Steph. They talk about him being one of the top five players ever. I won't go that far, but. It's just his, he has the top five impact on the game. I'll agree with that. Oh, no question about it. He definitely changed it for a generation of, uh, of players. So 
We got LeBron, Chris Paul, Luca, Lonzo, Trey. You have who did you have on your list? Um, Bron, CP3. Who was the other three? Russ, Ice Trey. So that's five. Yeah. Huh? Who's your honorable mention? So my honorable mention was Russ. Who's your honorable mention? Somebody that was supposed to be on the list, but isn't. Luca. Luca. He should have definitely been on the, on the list over uh over Russell. I just I just hold him to a different standard because he's on my team. Uh, uh Yeah, dude, you want him to be, you want him to be LeBron. I don't want him to be yeah, LeBron. Yeah, outrageous standards for most players. Yeah. You want exactly. players to be LeBron or bust, and it just doesn't work like that. No, I don't. I don't want them to yeah, be LeBron. You want them to be LeBron I, want, or I, want them, I want them to win. That's what I want. I want your yeah, impact. The Mavs had a winning record. They were in the playoffs before the yeah. COVID. Yeah. But it ain't championship. I'm championship or bust. Let's, let's not come here. Mavs, we all know the Mavs aren't a championship team. Exactly. He's ahead of the team, ain't he? He is the head of the team. Yes, sir. He's the best player on the team. But I just, I don't know. You don't give credit players enough credit for being, like, good at what they're at, what they do best. I do. I just I just hold him to a different standard because he's on my team. If he was on somebody else's team, I'd give him all the credit in the world. Like a dude who is a plus eight on the floor, I mean. Yeah, but he, he giving that whole eight back on the defensive end plus, so. It's going to take a while for him to get it right on the defensive end. I oh, no. It's just the speed of the game. That's it. And then you know your offense is going to always go before your, your defense. Before you, yeah. I don't want him to be locked down, but I want him to be respectable. He's definitely not respectable. <laughs> honestly, honestly, none of these point guards can guard each other, though. Nobody. None of them can guard each other. Lonzo can shut them all down. Lonzo got the hype, man. I haven't Six, seen Lonzo. Lonzo can defend, but I haven't seen him shut someone down, though. It's tough Check. to it's tough to shut somebody down. Check the stats. I'm gonna Lonzo damage people on the defense end. I mean, but Lonzo could be that two way guard. I hope he is anyway. His team would need that. They would need that for them to become a championship player. I honestly don't feel like Zion is going to be like a – I know we're talking about passers, but this is just a, a side thought. I don't feel like the Pelicans will win a championship with Zion. No, but he you he can't be your number one option, though. You say he can't? No, he got to be like your third option. You don't run no, no You play. know who should be the number one option on the team? Brandon Ingram. He should be the number one option on the team. He is, but he is not. No, he is not now. N n not before. I, 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 no, he was not that number one option. But, but I told you that was gonna happen. I told you that was gonna happen. But that's in the, last, in the last podcast. I said that. That's Once weak. Zion probably taking those, he taking those touches away. Then you got to feed Drew. And Lonzo got the ball. But Lonzo looking to distribute though, and that's why I mess with Lonzo. He looking to distribute. But that's going to be a problem because a lot of those shots that Brandon take, he he create in the space. Now it's the game is completely different now that um, Zion there they moving. And then like he undersized too, and I don't feel like he. I I just said I just literally got finished saying that your defense is not going to be as far as your offense. I just got finished saying that, so I have to be a little bit more patient with him. But I don't feel like I've seen him play, like great defense or even good defense or maybe I'm wrong um I just think he came in to the game where most people were like fit and season ready and he's just just getting started first season he started real late he only played like a month two months he didn't play yeah. long he, so two months ain't enough to go off of but for what I've seen he looks like he's a problem he is a problem until you play a dude that's lanky and got length on him. He's I, yo, he's only like what six six or six eight? I think it was. It's only six, six eight. Six, eight. I know I'm saying like only, that. but the average height in the NBA is six eight. So your average height, he's just two eighty, and dumb explosive. 
I mean, I when I see him, I see a, a better version. He can be a better version of Draymond. <laughs> a better version of Draymond? <laughs> I don't know, yeah. Chess. You got to give him a little bit more than that. That's not really a compliment, bro, because Draymond don't score as much as he do. I mean, he don't, but he ain't no anchor on defense like Draymond. He is not. He's not. Draymond, Draymond does something well. Somebody said the other day, another sidebar. I'm going to get back to the passer thing, but another sidebar. Someone said that Draymond Green was going to be in the Hall of Fame. Please give me your take on that. Um... He got three championships. Yes. Um, he got a do he got a defensive player of the year? Yes, he does. He got a couple um defensive team selections. Of course. First team at that, right? Yes, sir. He got the credentials. I guess he does have the credentials when you put it like that. I guess we get so caught up in like people who score. Yeah. And it's like, if you don't score this X amount of points, then we can't even consider you for the Hall of Fame. But he's been holding it down on the defensive end for close to a decade now. And so it's like, like you say, he got three championships also. So, I mean, it's, it will be tough to keep him out of the Hall of Fame. He probably won't make first ballot, but he'll make it. He'll make it, right. Like, every time I think of a Hall of Fame debate, I always say, is this person one of the greatest to ever do it? Draymond, he do great things, man. He, for somebody that's really not a scoring threat, but he runs one of the best offenses, you got to get, you got to tip your hat off to him. He's doing something right. Exactly. And it was like that point you made, well, it was in text messages, but you said he might be more valuable than KD because he's not looking for the ball. And I think that's, like, very true just because, obviously, he facilitates and he sets up everything. And going to passing, like, his passing is, like, A1. He can – he's, like, the best I've ever seen at being able to execute a screen and a DHO at the same time. So yeah. he'll give you a screen and then give you a dribble handoff at the same time without getting a foul. And then Steph or Clay will come off of that and get a three. Like, he's the best I've ever seen do that. I'm like, son, how is that not a foul? Because he's passing and screening at the same exact time. I, I think that's a foul, right? Because you can't do both at the same time. He figured a way. Yeah, he figured out a way. And because he just, he like drops that ball and then they, they grab it and they go into their shot. It's just, it's perfect. He's perfect for that offense. So I can't, I'm not going to hold it against him because of the scheme you play in. Like the scheme you play in, and this goes for football and basketball, the scheme you play in is supposed to accentuate your talents. And so I exactly. think. The, the scheme that he's in accentuates what he does best. So I'm not going to knock him for that. So I feel he definitely – he could have been on this this top five passers list, honestly. No, he couldn't have. Why not? No, he couldn't have. Why not? He's a great passer. He's not an exceptional passer. Like, it, we see the difference in his passing numbers with Clay and Steph and without him. Yeah, so that he, triple single. <laughs> that, was that, that triple that single. That triple single. He said he ain't taking all that stuff, averaging that triple single. <laughs> <laughs> Charlie, so I know. Bro, I love watching them. Oh, I miss that so much, man. Every Thursday night, bro. Stupid, Something to laugh at. Stupid COVID-19, man. Come on, bro. So all stupid. right. So um, we have our passers list. So now we're going to segue – into another segment, and I want Chester's take. I want you to talk about – I want you to fill people in, first of all, on the Jordan and Jerry Stackhouse thing. I want you to give them your take on that, and then I'll give my take on it. Well, when it comes to Jordan and Stackhouse, if you're talking basketball-wise, Jerry Stackhouse has a point, but – You got to let him know what, what, the, what the argument was or what he said. Who? Cool. What Jerry Stackhouse said to spark this whole thing. Oh, he um, said it was – he didn't – he lost a little respect for Jordan in his years in, um, with Washington just because of – he felt like he was the star and, you know, you really not going to get that over Jordan. Or any Never. Day, you know, and that's why this thing is so asinine. No. He outplayed them, but – 
Statistically, yes. Just, he outplayed just him. from reality. I mean, no, go ahead. Give your take first, and then I'll get mine. No, he's just he's just detached. You know, he, he just doesn't – he's not aware of what's, <laughs> what's going on around him. <laughs> That's it. Sorely, poorly unaware of what's going on around him, bro. You think you're going to get the ball over the goat? Like, are you serious? All right, first of all, he's trying to be the president of the team, buddy. I, you <laughs> <laughs> Like, what? Like, when I'm reading this, I had to sit back and I was like, does Stack have a legitimate point? And when you brought up his numbers, I was like, average more points by one, because Jordan averaged 20, Stack averaged 21 and a half. Mm-hmm. And he averaged more assists. So – he may have a slight a slight edge, and he did it on less shots too. So he he has a he has a gripe. But think about this: Jordan is doing pretty much the same thing Stack is doing at forty years old, though. Not the same thing because he's holding the ball longer than Stack, and Stack is doing more on the offensive end. So it's if just you, if it's you just were Doug Collins, who you would get the ball to? Huh? If you were Doug Collins, who who would you have gave, given the ball to? I mean, if it's, I'm giving it to Jordan, but it's you're giving it's it not, to Jordan. See, it's not even a it's, it's not even a thing. It's not for basketball reasons. What if it mean? was basketball reasons, they would have won. They wouldn't have been out of the playoffs. Jordan played all 82 games. If, if he was doing so much better than Stat, he he would have better numbers. I mean, again. Jordan was 40. Let's keep that in consideration. He was 40 years old. But like you said, he did it on less shot attempts. And if you're taking less shot attempts and you're averaging more assists, I'm going to take it. as You're not getting as many looks as you want. So it's not the same when Jordan is getting every look that he wants. But, I mean, I just – I can't believe the audacity of Stackhouse is, what, is, is my point. The audacity I mean, to I- complain – and then on top of that, if I'm looking at his where, hold on. Here it is right here. This was his one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. This was his 10th year in the league. He was 28 when he played with Jordan. So he was right. in he his was prime. Just kind of like he had been in the league for a minute already. Nobody entering his prime. Yeah, he was yeah, he was just entering his prime. So he yeah, was that, like, yo, he hindered my development. It's like how did he hinder your development? You pretty much are what you are from, like, 28 to, like, 34 or 35. But he had just averaged 24 in the playoffs the year before he got there. So it wasn't – it was a hinder. He got a point. <laughs> now he got I, a I point. Think, I, don't, I, think, I don't think he I got think a point, bro. Looking at, as, go. looking at it as a fan and Stackhouse looking at it as a peer, like, but because that's what he is, they both putting on the same. They playing for the same team. That's his peer, so he's not looking at him as the goat. I get it. He's just not. He's just not aware. I don't know. And then Stephen A. He had a good. He had a good. Uh, a good story about this. So he said when Stackhouse was in um, Philly with AI, they the Sixers had just drafted AI, and he was saying that Stack was like, "Yo." I should be getting more shots than AI, but people had already knew that AI was going to be AI. And so now I'm sitting here thinking, like, this dude wanted more shots than AI, and this dude wanted more shots than Jordan. Like, I like Stack, and Stack is a good player, but who does this guy think he is, bro? <laughs> like, he on his irrational confidence wave. That, listen, are we going to call it irrational confidence, or are we going to call it Kobe mentality? Because it's the no, same thing. No, don't do that. Don't do that. Then it's not Kobe mentality. Stop. Don't do Kobe. that. Mentality is irrational. It's not irrational because Kobe, Kobe is a goat. Like it's not irrational. Stack and Stack and Kobe are in two different lanes. Listen, Stack but that number three NBA, you gotta have that same mindset. You gotta have doggy dog mindset. You ain't gonna show love to him. Like y'all, you gonna outperform him? It's competitive. But we know that he was not better than any of any of the two players I just named. But he was that year. He averaged more points than him. So just because you average more points than somebody, you better than him? Listen, I, 
that's how I ended up falling in love with, <laughs> with KD because he averaged more points than Westbrook and Westbrook took more shots. So you're saying Stack had a legitimate gripe. That is a legitimate gripe. EJ, if me and you balling and you tell me that you get in more points and more assists on the offensive end, but I got the ball more, that ain't going to be a problem for you? But you play with me. You know I'm not a, a score first player. I can score, but I'm not a score first player. It doesn't matter. Say you're going off that game, and that happened, and I've just got the ball, and we lose it behind you. You ain't going to have a gripe about it? I thank you for watching this first YouTube video uh, stream of the uh, podcast, uh, Ham and Turkey, on our new Ham and Turkey YouTube channel. Again, if you are watching this video, I would really love it if you would subscribe and tell someone else to subscribe. We will be coming back with probably an episode maybe tomorrow where I talk bills. So I'm going to be talking a lot of Bills Bills content on here. I'm a huge, huge, huge Bills fan. Rams first, Bills second. But I'm a huge football fanatic, and I'm going to be talking some uh, football tomorrow. So, um, again, I appreciate you listening and watching on YouTube. Um, the Ham and Turkey, again, is available on any streaming platform where you stream your music or podcast. Uh, obviously or unfortunately, excuse me, it is not on Tidal, but it is on every other streaming platform. So please subscribe to the podcast on your favorite uh, streaming site so you can have the Tam and Turkey on the go. And so, again, I would love for you to tune in to the next episode where we talk some uh, Bills football. And then we got some... Um, episode scheduled for next week where we're going to be reacting to the last dance for uh the michael jordan documentary we will be doing um reactions after every episode so again tune in to that and again i thank you for listening and i thank you for watching on youtube to the ham and turkey